In today's video, we're doing a carbon overhaul on my G80 M3. Hey, this is Brian, that's Zach behind the camera. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. It helps us get found. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. In today's video, it is video one of a four part series where we are doing a total carbon fiber overhaul on my G80 M3. In today's video, we are going to be focusing on the lower portion of the car. You know what? It's really hard to visualize, so let me do this for you. Oh, there you go. Now you guys can have a better understanding on what we're going to be doing today. Now, as you can see, we have a ton of carbon out and there are some duplicate pieces because we have a couple different options for you today. So what Zach's gonna do now, he's gonna pick up the camera and let's walk around the car and talk about what we have. So as you guys can see, there's a ton of carbon laid around the car. This is all dry carbon fiber. And as I said earlier, this is only part one of a four part series. So make sure you come back for parts two, three, and four. So starting at the front of the car, one of the things that I dislike the most about the G80 M3 is this like weird grill action. Now on some of the cars from the factory, you can opt for this carbon fiber air duct, which looks incredible. However, the BMW OEM stuff costs two left legs. So with this, you're still gonna get super high quality dry carbon, but it's going to be at a fraction of the cost. In fact, all of this stuff is going to be a fraction of the cost, yet still excellent quality when you compare it to BMW OEM. So as I mentioned earlier, we did want to give you guys some different options because everybody has a different style and what you guys like might be different from what I like and vice versa. So a lot of people think that the G80 M3 sits pretty low, especially once you put it on springs or something like a KW Haskett. And they don't really want to put a chunk of carbon up here because maybe they have a low driveway, maybe they just don't like the look. So for those people who still want to have some carbon fiber, we have a dry carbon replacement piece for this little front splitter, if you want to call it that, where you just remove the OEM one and then this is going to just get installed right there as a direct replacement. And then you still have that carbon look without the front lip. Now for me, I like a carbon fiber front lip, as many of you do. So we are actually going to be installing a three-piece dry carbon lip. Um, something about the three-piece lip is that it makes it super easy to install because you can focus on getting that installed, you can focus on getting the other side installed, and then you can install the lower lip portion. So it makes it super easy to install, especially if you're doing the install by yourself. Another thing with the three-piece design front lip, as you can see, it offers a different style. So if you want something more discreet, you can go with this, or if you want more carbon and something a little bit chunkier, this is definitely the way to go for you. Next, starting to move around the car, we have these dry carbon air flicks, which are going to give you a little bit more downforce, and they just look really cool. We have them on John's race car over there. A Little bit different style, but I don't know, flicks just make the car look super aggressive. Moving on to the side, as you can see, if you watched our video when we took our car to designer wraps and we had them stealth wrap it, while everything was apart and off, we made an impulse purchase and we purchased the OEM BMW carbon fiber um, fender badges. So that's offered as a direct replacement to our black plastic ones. Now with this kit, we do have an overlay. So if you want a significantly less expensive than a BMW OEM piece, you still get this really cool carbon look. It is just a piece of dry carbon that you can either glue or 3M tape to the side here. And again, it looks incredible. It is super easy to do. You don't have to worry about scratching your paint or trying to remove these. It's just super, super easy. Continuing along, as you can see, we have a full replacement side skirt. This is not just an overlay that will slide over this. This black part will actually come out. We're gonna remove the entire side skirt. And then this dry carbon side skirt is a direct replacement. You can see the quality on this thing is just insane. And it is crazy light. So I can't wait to install that. And then as you can see on the back of the side skirt where the OEM one just is pretty plain. This has a super aggressive fin, which is just going to add a lot of style points. And then in the back of the car, we have a couple different options. So starting kind of in the middle, we have two different style diffusers. There's a Euro version, and then there's also more of a US based version. So we're gonna show you both of those. And then for the rear splitter, there's even another part we can do. So this piece here is more of a carbon fiber direct replacement, or 
If you want to go off the styling of that, we also have this one with a more aggressive fin that just looks super, super cool and looks a little bit more aggressive. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You probably spied this epic looking wing on the back table and you noticed that I didn't talk about it. Well, this is going to be a part of our four part series. We are going to not only show you this, but we want to bring you a ultimate spoiler slash wing guide for the G80 M3, where we are going to go over some of the most popular styles, including this, but you're just gonna have to wait to see which one we install. Then once we bring you the spoiler video, we do have another video, really the only other part besides like a shark fin would be mirror cap. Um, because this is more of a sensitive install because there is a $500 piece of glass here that has to be removed, we wanna make sure that we don't just glaze over it and then we take the amount of time that we need to make sure that you guys are going to do it safely at home. So we are going to have a step-by-step -step DIY. And then after that, we have a final video that I'm not gonna tell you about. You're just gonna have to wait and see. All right, so now that you guys have an understanding of today's game plan, what we're going to do is we are going to start with the side skirts because for the rest, for video purposes, it's going to be a lot easier if we do it on the lift. However, when you have lift arms and you have the lift pole, it is a pain in the butt to do side skirts. So what we're going to do, I am going to jack up this side of the car. We're going to put some ramps under the car, just angle it. So that way we can still get you guys some good angles and the dang lift's not in my way. All right, let's start with the side skirts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to lift the vehicle with my jack here and I'm gonna put it on my little ramp things here. All right, now you are going to need a pick tool and let's slide under here and I will show you what is going to happen. So if you take a look, basically you have these rivets and all you need to do is you need to press in the middle and then from there, what you can do is just pull the rest of it out. Um, these are technically not reusable unless you can find all the little middle pieces. So you will need some replacement rivets. So I'll just pull one out to show you guys what's going on here. Okay. So basically it looks like that. This little piece here will go through the bottom and then basically make it um, you need a, a plastic rivet gun and then what happens is that'll actually pull this little pin in and then it'll fasten it in place. Why do BMW use these? I have no idea. We have some other rivets we're going to be replacing it with. All right, I'm going to get my, uh, my little trim popper tool and I'm going to pull out all of those and then I'll show you how to get the skirt off. All right, now. You could start from the back, you can start from the front, whatever you wanna do. Basically, there's just a series of clips that are holding it along the top. So just take your hand and then just very carefully work your way down and start to pull this out. Okay. And if you're new to cars, it's gonna be a little nerve wracking for you, but don't worry, it'll be fine. Just don't break it. Okay, I'm just gonna take this and put it over here. All right, so now what we're gonna do, um, what's really interesting about how BMW did this, like technically that's just like trim and then this is the actual side skirt. So you replace, I don't know, it's kind of weird how they did it, but it's all good. BMW, they do what they want. Um, when you do this, make sure that you have this part completely underneath here. And then we're just gonna start on one side and then we're gonna work our way back. So let's start in the front. Make sure that you have everything lined up at the end here. And then just double check yourself in the back. So you can see once I had everything lined up right, I clipped it in like five clips went in. So that's how you know you, you have it right.
All right, so that all looks good. Man, look how, look how cool that looks. Can't wait for my kids to step on it. <laughs> all right, let me grab some uh, fasteners. So this is a plastic rivet gun. I was debating if I want to use the plastic rivets or not. Um, I mean, I have them, so I'm going to use them. Um, otherwise, you'll just have to get some, some new ones. Um, but basically, the way that this works is there's a little middle portion like that. This goes through. You put this in here, and then I don't want to actually use this rivet. And then when you squeeze this, it's going to grab it, pull it down, and then it'll squish it kind of like this, and then it'll uh, hold it in place. And then these little nubs are what's going to actually be what's securing it. And then you break off the little tab. So to give you a sample, we're going to take this, we're going to pop it in there like that. And then I'll do this end one here for you. It's going to go in like so. You're going to go like that. Sometimes you do it twice. And then normally it'll break it off for you, just like that. And then you're left with this and a very secure fastener. Mm. Then, other than me nicking my uh, PPF there, um, everything looks really good, super solid, and it's very easy to install. Um, just make sure that you take your time pressing it in. Make sure that everything is lined up correctly. Um, just so you guys can see the general fitment. If you want to get a close up of over there. So there is, it's, 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 it's really flush. Um, there is a very slight part that comes out a little bit. Um, but just to give you guys an accurate representation of everything. And then in the back for the style, it's got the extra fin. Um, it does stick out a little bit past. And it kind of like wraps around a little bit. Um, overall, looks really cool and super excited. So now that you guys have a better understanding on what to do, I'm just gonna do the other side and we're just gonna time lapse it. All right, so as you can see, our carbon fiber side skirts are fully installed and they look incredible. Um, I did nip my uh, PPF a little bit, but hey, it's PPF, so it could be a lot worse, but they look really good. I can't wait to add the rear splitters that also have that wing. I think it's gonna look super aggressive and it's gonna add a super nice style to this car. All right, so now what we're going to do since the side skirts are done and they look amazing, we are going to work on this diffuser setup here. So if you would join me on this side, we're gonna start, we're gonna take off this side and then we'll probably take off the other side and then we'll pull the diffuser off. So you're going to need a little trim popper tool like this. Um, if you guys don't know what tools to get, we're gonna have everything linked for you down in the description below. But if you take a look under here, here's this little plastic fastener. And this car has about 3,000 miles on it. And these aren't aging all that well. So I can't imagine getting these guys off when they have like 40,000 miles on it. You know, while we're at it, while we're in the neighborhood, let's just take them all off because we're going to need to anyway. I've already got the tool out. Just make it happen. I'm in the video. Hey, it's Zach. I made it. I'm famous. Doesn't that Daler exhaust just look amazing? Looks so good. All right, let's throw it on the side. Once you've done that, everything is loose. And my goal is to not jack up my PPF again. Ugh, you just gotta yank it like He-Man. Um, <laughs> and my PPF is fine. Success. Now, why are these clips so difficult? I don't know. Um, they are a royal pain in the butt. But we got it. Because we're champions. Ugh. Look at that. Beautiful. Not a clip broken. 
Um, <laughs> look at this, look how, look how ghetto this looks. <laughs> it's like a hole. What is this? You should leave it like that. Yeah, that looks way better. <laughs> so funky looking. They're like, hey, if we cut out this little part of the bumper, we can save eight cents. All right, we're feeling strong, so we're gonna... Oh, there we go. It's pretty nerve wracking, not gonna lie. You know, I don't want this video to turn into my $70,000 mistake or more. You have to replace the whole car after you broke your sweater? Oh, the car is more than that, it's just a bumper. <laughs> the chip shortage, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now that we, now that we did that, I'm just gonna take our diffuser. This, the new G80 is just like, I'm just gonna take this off so I don't lose it. Um, the new G80 is just like, yank. Yank and pray. <laughs> this, is how, this is why we're not really making a DIY, even though we kind of always end up Ugh. <laughs> making a DIY. It's just like yank. There's no like graceful way to do it. Ow, that hurt a lot. Ooh. <clears throat> this is awful. I mean, it's so easy. <laughs> See, this is real life right here. This thing's a pain in the butt. And like, you can't even really push these tabs in. Like, if you were to take the bumper off, if you look at the tab, it's just not, not nice. Not nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so get as close as you can and then swift pull. <clears throat> Try not to cry. <laughs> I don't want to drop it. Uh, I didn't drop it. Ow. <laughs> All right, if you look over at the diffusers, you will notice that there are two different styles. Um, and the one, I think this one is the US style. This is the European style. Um, with this one, you'll notice that like the fins go straight down where these kind of angle out i think the angle looks cooler so that's what we're going to install um, it installs the exact same way well which whichever one you do you basically just line it up and push it um, it is dry carbon just be super careful just make sure that you have all the clips lined up and then it should just snap right in so okay make sure everything's lined up and then BMW designed it so this piece of black trim stays. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but um, so that that is not getting swapped out, just so you know. Uh, what? I like it actually, the black. The I black? Like the, the it looks pretty cool. It's not pro. It just kind of like catches you off guard because it's not what they've done in the past. But I'm just glad that you can replace the diffuser at all because like when you think about like the, the E92 and stuff, look how nice that fits. I love dry carbon. It's just like pop, we're in. Um, the the thing is, when you um, like with the E92, it didn't have a removable diffuser at all. So. Um, the fact that you can remove it at all is just a huge win. But yeah, way more of a pain in the butt than the F80. Um, and again, like this is like ideal conditions. The car is new, it's 3000 miles or whatever. Um, we've had the car for what, six months or so. Um, once these cars start to get old, you're gonna go <laughs> rip and like the diffusers are just like crack in half. So I'm glad we didn't have to do that. Just to kind of show you guys what it looks like, I'm just gonna hold both up. So that's what that one looks like. 
I don't know, I, I, I like that one too. And then here's what the fin looks like. Can you hold the other one up again? And then here's this one. I don't know, I kind of like this one. I like the fin one because it like moves with right. like a con I don't know. It flows better, I think. What do you want? I don't know. Kind of like this. I'm gonna do this one, actually. Okay. I made up my mind. I'm gonna do the one I thought I wasn't gonna do. Um, I don't know. I kind of, I kind of like the simplicity of it. Um, I don't do a lot of fins in general. I mean, I have fins on my 335, but they're really small. Yeah, let's go with this one. Um, when putting it on, it's always best to start over here because you have to like pop it in and then snap it in. So that's why I started from that way too. Um, whenever you're doing anything like this, just look at the part that you're going to be installing. And then that'll give you clues if there's like where the clips are and all that kind of stuff. Um, because especially when, like, I don't think, I don't, I haven't seen any guides on how to do this yet. So I mean, honest, honestly, a lot of it was just like tap here, pull there and look at the, look at the uh, aftermarket one to see what, what's what. Okay. Um, if you want to come over here, Zach, mm -hmm. make sure, see right there, you want to make sure that you get this part around that. So make sure that you have it far enough over where you can do all of that. Okay, there it goes. Boom. That's a proper automotive pressing technique. It's called boom. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, let's do the same on the other side. Let me go grab that one. One thing you can do, there's a little tab on here. If it starts to get hung up at all, you can ever so slightly, I'm trying to do this so you guys can see it. Just lop a little bit of that off if you're having any trouble with it. Um, doesn't really do anything. <laughs> All these rocks. Perfect, I love dry carbon. Have I told you that before? And then we're just gonna put this thing back in. Our tow hook cover. Perfect, that clips into place. Oh man, look how good this looks. And then, the, the, I, I don't know. I have a love-hate relationship with this car. Some of the stuff is like super easy, like these. You don't even really need a screwdriver to do this. But then, some of the stuff is like way harder than it needs to be. Like when you lower, when I lowered this car on the AST springs, um, I had to unbolt the collar nut or the collar bolt that holds the axle in and then like dislodge the axle to get enough clearance. So like, that's just like way overkill. But this thing looks so good. All right, so as you guys know, I PPF my car. I wanna make sure that it stays protected and let's be honest, the Stealth Wrap looks super cool. And I'm super happy with what Designer Wraps was able to do, even though I messed some of it up today. So we'll have to bring it back and have them do some little touch up stuff. Um, but again, that was my fault anyway. Now, another thing that we wanna do in the lines of protecting the vehicle is making sure that this chunk of carbon is preserved this is preserved and honestly the side of my car even though i have ppf i don't want rocks shooting down the side of my car as many of you know we're going to come out with some videos on this stuff later we have spacers on the car which pull the wheels out which if you look down there you'll see if you take a look although it's not that much the tire sticks out past here so what happens is as you're driving you're going to be shooting rocks down the side of ow, your car so to help prevent stop laughing <laughs> that, that hurt really bad <laughs>
<laughs> be strong, be strong. <laughs> but all seriousness, to protect the car, Tommy L Garage makes these really cool mud flaps. This one goes here and it protects that from happening. And so again, it's going to protect your carbon fiber from getting rocks chucked at it all day. And then also the side of your car. And then in the back, you use these big ones like so. And not only does it protect the car behind you, but as you can see, it provides really good coverage if you have some kind of carbon fiber on the back of the car with your diffuser system. So let's get these installed. They are super, super easy to install. Um, it's gonna take five minutes. Um, in the back, I'm gonna do it without removing the wheels. In the front, we'll see if I have to or not. I might be able to just pivot them. Um, a lot of times in the back, it's gonna be a lot easier if you do remove the wheels, but I have a little tool that's gonna help us with that. So first thing we need is a 10 millimeter. And Tommy gives you all the little pieces of hardware that you need all the rivets. So that's always super cool. But there is a 10 mil here. And then there's one above it right up there. Then in the little bag that Tommy provides here, there are these two little Phillips head screws. Um, and then what's going to happen is these are going to replace the OEM screw. So we're going to take this, we're going to pop this through, and then this will go way up there. And I'm just going to start to hand thread that in. And then I need to do the same for the one down here. And then I have this little Phillips driver. Looks like this. And then everything will be protected. It was funny, when I came home from having my PPF done, the only thing I could think about was, was like, man, I wish I had my mud flaps on. And we do them on every car. I have them on the F80, I have them on the F30. Yeah, they're on, on the G20, they're on your car too, right? See, they're on every car. So as you can see now, everything back here is protected and I can sleep at night. Um, so now, <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it on the other side. Um, but seriously, these are amazing. We'll leave info for Tommy down below. If you want to get a set, they're very inexpensive and <laughs> they will say, if you have one rock shoot across the side of your car, they will more than pay for themselves in one little incident. Um, so then with the bottom one, it's going to go here, here, and then there's an extra screw that Tommy gives you to put down here. Um, now my carbon does stick it out a little bit further um, just because of how it's made. Um, so I might just do the top two. We'll see if that's gonna flap around. So let me first get these out. These are just like all the ones we had underneath. So I need to go grab a pick tool, pop the little middle piece in, and then pull it out. Pachoo! Pachoo! Take this, pop it in there like that. Let me pop that in. Let me go grab my other tool. And then as funny as it is, these work best if you just tap them in with a hammer. So then once everything is fully installed, it looks like this, and it is super solid and protective. So now um, off camera, I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on the outside of the car. All right, so today is actually a new day for us, which I think I had a hat on last time we did this video. Um, but anyway, so what we wanted to do for today's video, a lot of you guys are going to be installing parts and we have the luxury of having a lift right there. Um, and a lot of you guys don't. So what we wanted to do, because the front is a little bit more involved, we wanted to show you how to do it if you don't have access to a lift. Now I would highly recommend ramps. So you see we have some ramps. Um, because of how low the car sits, I never drive on them, which is kind of funny because it's kind of what they're for. Um, I actually take a jack, I jack the vehicle up, slide it under, and then I do the exact same thing to the other side. But once we get that up, what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove the front bumper and then we're going to install these really cool dry carbon air ducts. These are going to replace this funky grill thing and also that plastic underneath. And then we have our three piece front lip. So basically this is going to replace that piece over there. And then there's a really cool piece that goes across the front, kind of sort of similar to how I have my M340i. So with that being said, we're going to do this at home DIY style. I'm going to jack up the car, 
put this thing on ramps, and then I'll show you how to pull off the front bumper. All right, so once you have the front of your car securely in the air, whether it is on a jack and jack stands or you have ramps, what you wanna do is pop the hood, just pull the latch twice. That's going to undo both latches and then you'll be able to pull that up. Next, you will need a trim popper tool thing for these little plastic rivets. Um, you will see that there's one here, 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 and then there should be one more over there. What you're going to do, I like to kind of get that started slide this up and shoot it. Um, watch out, sometimes they jump. <laughs> then you can just carefully pop up the rest of this, like so. So it's a two-part system. If you've worked on any BMW, you are going to be very familiar with these. <clears throat> so Zach and I, okay, so once you do that, you can literally just take this and just move it out of the way. Um, so Zach and I, specifically said this is going to be like a vlog and not a DIY. It's a DIY and nothing like a vlog. So this is what it is. Hope you like DIYs. It's kind of our thing, I guess. All right, once you've done that and you get to this point, you're going to see that there is a series of torques. So you're going to take your torx bit and remove those. Now, one thing that you want to note is as you remove these, you'll be able to see a very clear indication of where the bolt was. When you go to reinstall the bumper, you wanna make sure that you have that exactly the way it was. And that is a little secret on how you're gonna get that perfect hood alignment, just like it should have come from the factory since it's not a Tesla. Ready? All right, so I'm gonna go put these down and then let's work on the bottom. Then we'll work on the underneath. And then from there, we'll work on the sides. Now you will have to get the wheels off the ground a little bit. So we are going to have to lift the side of the vehicle um, just so that we can get to a couple of the bolts. Typically there's some bolts that sit right about there. Um, and because the car is slammed, it doesn't, I don't have the opportunity to do that like this. So let me go set these down, we'll continue. All right, so underneath the bumper here on the ground, um, what we are going to do is we are going to take out these 10 mils and then also a couple of these other um, various fasteners. Um, one thing, that I'm so thankful for. Um, BMW uses 10 mils now instead of all those goofy eights. It's just, they made it so much easier. So thanks BMW, you're the best. Okay, so just like the other ones. Okay. All right, so now we need to get a little more clearance in here. All right, so now the body's a little bit further off the ground. There's a 10 mil here, here, and then up here. And then once we do that, we can pull back the fender liner. And there should be two bolts that go this way, um, just like on any of the other F30s, F80s, all that kind of stuff, even on Zach's car. Um, and then once we do this side, we're gonna do the other side, make sure that everything is disconnected, and then we'll be able to pull the bumper off. Once you've done that, sorry, I'm shooting rocks at you. I'm just gonna keep going like this. Okay, so then once you're in here, um, the two bolts that you need to remove, there's one here and then there's one here. So basically it's, well, there's gonna be one like right here and one right here that goes in there. Um, I said some nice things about BMW, kind of regret it because they use eight mils here. Why couldn't you just use a 10 mil BMW? Come on. So once again, I'm going to blindly feel for this bolt so you guys can see what I'm doing. That's a shot of what it looks like. So it's actually, it's actually quite long. Then once you've done that, you can just carefully just pull out your bumper like so. And then over here, there's two connections. There's one up here, and then there's one over here for the PDC. You need to make sure that you disconnect this unless you wanna rip your sensors out, which 
actually don't recommend. Okay. So here's the one. You just press on that little gray tab and then that slides out. And then the other one, you just grab the top and bottom and then that'll pop off too. It's a little awkward, a little tight. So here's that connection. So it just has a uh, clip on the top, clip on the bottom. And then you just dislodge that and you're good to go over here. All right, so now that you know what to do, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side of the car here. All right, on this side of the bumper, I can only really bend it out so much. We have our ambient temperature sensor down here. Just connect this guy here. Pop. Then we have our PDC here. Okay, and then on this one, you gotta pop the clip and then pull that off. Um, the car doesn't have any headlight washers, which is awesome. Um, let me just make sure everything bottom cover is loose. So then, I'm just gonna very carefully pull this down. I just wanna make sure that there's no other connections that I missed. Okay. You just like get it to a certain point and then you just gotta commit. All right. And that's how you take a bumper off a G80 M3. Look at this thing. Hey, you leave my car alone. It's a forest in here. So this is kind of funny. We just took the bumper off, we haven't done anything. This was never clipped in. So you're like, oh, at least they did the other side. Nope. <laughs> All right, so what you want to do is pop this clip and then pop this one, this one, this one. Um, well, that certainly worked out in our favor. Um, let's see, I am going to have to do this one. Oh, good thing it's not clipped. <laughs> wow, this is so funny. Let's take a BMW. Um, here, come around the side here. I want to show you what I'm going to do next. So now what we're going to do is we are going to try to get this grill out. I'm going to try to leave the bumper pretty much assembled. Um, a lot of guys will start over here and just take out the whole inner piece. Um, I'm going to see if there's an easier way to do it. Not opposed to doing that. I mean, we're already, <laughs> already gone this far. So, um, but let's just see if we can do it. Again, I think this, you know, I feel pretty encouraged because of how terrible this was all put together. Um, over here is gonna be a little bit tricky, but I think this side should come off with relative ease. Just make sure that you watch your PDC cables and all. Um, so as you can see over here, we have a series of tabs. So basically you need to push the tab down and then pull up. Um, even if you're not doing the carbon grills, which if you're watching this video, you're probably going to do them. Um, just removing that little mesh thing makes the bumper look a million times better. Um, is it beneficial? Yes, it's beneficial because if you have a squirrel jump out, something that is larger than these holes, um, it's not going to get in, but you're still gonna get a lot of the same rock chips and whatnot. So I don't think it's as um, as big of a difference as some people are led to believe. All right, so let's see let's see how far we can get. Um, I, do, I do think I am gonna have to separate this a little bit more because it is getting a little jammed up around here. Um, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get that completely off. It's actually just about there. I just need a little bit more clearance. Um, let me see if I can get my hand in here. BMW uses 3M tape. 
to adhere this. So if I can get just a little bit more clearance. I should be able to get this out. Okay. Boom. Winner. All right, so now you want to get the one that is going to match and line up, which as you can see, the shape and size of this one looks good. You can see this one does not look good. So I'm gonna take this guy, make sure we have it in the correct orientation. And then as you can see, it's all dry carbon fiber. And then it has these nice plastic clips so everything clips in nice and, nice and snug. Okay. So in all reality, I did have to pull up a lot more than I thought I was going to, but um, worked out pretty good. Okay, and then I'm just going to feed these clips in. Make sure that everything's going in the right place. And unlike BMW, we're gonna clip them in. <laughs> All right, it's proving to be more of a pain in the butt than I want it to be. So I am just gonna pop off the rest of this plastic. Um, it has popped off thus far. Pretty dang easy. So I don't really expect it to give us all that much of a fight. Okay, so over here, we are disconnected. I'm gonna leave it mostly in place. All right, so the area where it was kind of giving me a little issue, so I boogered it up a little bit. This needs to go under here. So basically what I need to do is I need to hook this and then I can proceed. But with how it was before, it just, just didn't, yeah, that was exactly what I needed in my life. Literally fell into place. And then, once again, unlike BMW, we can clip it in. Okay, oh, that looks really nice. This little weird thing goes on here. And this little weird thing goes on here. Again, this is not a DIY. <laughs> I'm gonna pop this off of here. I don't wanna stretch anything out or break anything. We'll get that to go under the sensor. And that's gonna go like that and I can put that screw back in and then everything else lined up. Now, before you do a final tighten, if you look over here, there is an eight millimeter. This is actually one of the last, well, it's the last bolt that holds on this piece of trim for our front lip. So you wanna remove it before you put everything back together. Um, I am just gonna throw this eight mil in while I have the eight mil out so I don't lose it. Golden. It's weird how BMW made it. So they have the option from the factory of the carbon air ducts. We have to like literally split the bumper apart to get it in. It's kind of strange. Um, all right, so now that we have that eight mil out and we have this side done, I am gonna to have to put the new bolt in here before I put everything back. So it makes sense for us to kind of pause from here, jump over to here. I'll show you how to do this and then we'll continue with the other side. We'll do the air duct and then we'll do the opposite little splitter that's going to um, be on there. So let me flip this over so you guys have a better view of everything. So first off, look at the difference. It went from that to that. That looks so much better, so much better. Why can't they just come like that? Ah. All right, so now that the bumper is facing upwards here, um, what I wanna do is I wanna show you the replacement piece. So this one isn't the one we're installing, this is the direct replacement. 
Um, but what we can learn from it is where the clip positioning is. So you can see that there are three clips and they're kind of on an angle like this. So basically with this, we're gonna need to pull it kind of like this. Um, if you pull it this way, there's a chance you're going to mess up your clips. So that being said, I'm gonna start from the inside and kind of work its way out. And as you saw from the back, all this stuff is just a pain in the butt. So I got all three. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, we were able to use our replacement piece as a model and see what's going on. Um, you will notice that we do have to transfer over this little plastic piece onto our new one. Um, again, I'm not going to be going with the carbon one, which looks amazing. We're going to be going with the one that has the, the piece for the middle for the front lip. So let me grab that one. And so now I'm gonna take that clip, put it on just like that. Um, something that you'll notice with this one is where this one uses the factory clips. This one doesn't because it actually rides higher. So that's why these all come pre-taped super nice like that. Um, I just need to make a little adjustment to the tape. Um, just comes up a little bit higher than I would like, so I'm going to trim that back a hair, and then I'll show you how to properly adhere this to the bumper. Off camera in our not DIY, um, Zach and I were talking while I was cleaning the bumper off, so clean it with alcohol. Um, then we're gonna do an initial test fit here. Oh baby, look at that. That's nice. Um, to hold it in the back, I am gonna put the screw in. So let's see the best way to do this. I guess the best way. All right, look at that. That looks awesome. It's not even mounted, it looks great. Um, what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna peel the tape off. And I'm gonna pull it up and then I'm gonna stick it and then I'm going to move the tape along and then I'm going to pull it off. I'll show you what I'm going to do in a second. Okay, so this is going to go here. That looks awesome. Excuse me. And then we're going to go like this. I'm also making sure that everything is lined up down here. That's going to go like so. And just hold this on there a couple seconds and then this is going to adhere that looks so good so for those of you who didn't know um, about like two hours after buying the car I got a ginormous rock chip and that's what this little funky thing is I don't think I've told many people about that so you're one of the few to know I took it to a body shop and they got it there they wanted to repaint the whole bumper I just wasn't really ready for that so um, now that our counseling session's done, let's move, let's move on to this other side. So as we've learned from our DIY on that side, it's very important that you disconnect this PDC sensor. Then you're going to want to take this off. We're going to need an eight mil to take this off, push in these little pieces of plastic. So I didn't really go over that that much earlier, but this little piece of hanging plastic and then the outer one over here, you press them in. If you just yank it, you're gonna break them, but they actually hold it in place, so you don't wanna do that. This is the way. <laughs> um, just looking over, there's no other real quirks or anything. There's a sensor over here, your ambient temperature. Um, doesn't look like it's gonna get in the way. So I'm just going to just go at it without talking.
So right now I'm loving the way that this is looking. Um, I do just wanna just double check everything. That's connected. That's connected, that's connected. Everything is sitting flush. This is tight, that's tight. Um, everything is where it needs to be. All right, so we're good to go. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna slide the bumper on. You wanna make sure that this lower plastic is going into this groove over here. And then everything is going to uh, clip into place a little bit. And then we're gonna slide this underneath those little clips on the front. That's gonna hold it and then we'll secure everything down. All right, so when you do this, you wanna be super careful. Um, I do have the car PPF'd. Um, I still don't wanna scratch, even though the PPF is self-healing and all. Um, you wanna be very careful with the ends. A lot of times what I like to do is I like to put on painter's tape, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna go for it. Also watch your lights too, because definitely do not wanna scratch them. Okay. We're good over there. And up here, what you wanna do is just, you just take it and then you just slide it into these clips. And then remember the trick that we talked about earlier, you wanna make sure that you take the screws and you line them up with the, the imprints. So once you have that like this, you should be able to let go of your bumper. Um, if you can't pull this up with ease, it means that underneath is not correct. So I gotta just make sure that everything is positioned correctly. Put my plastics over here on the wrong side. There we go. Much better. As you can see here, you wanna just get this up, lift it up, and then now it slides in with ease. And then I can get this back around here. I can throw this guy back in like that. Okay, that is looking good. Um, there is a section under here where this actually goes. So I'm gonna just lift this up. I love this carbon look. I mean, this. This completely transforms the G80. I would, I would say, if I, was, if I only had to pick one thing out of this whole kit, 100%, I'd pick these carbon inlets. They look so stinking good on this car. Now, what we're going to do, I'm gonna put a piece of mounting tape over here. And I'll do the same on the other side. This isn't 100% necessary, but I think it helps just make sure everything is secure. But basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull off the tape and then we're gonna put this up here. We're gonna mount that up and then we're going to screw um, these other 10 mils in and then everything should line up really nice. Um, one thing you'll notice is that I didn't fully secure those in, um, all the 10 mils are um, just kind of sitting in place and that's so if I need to push it over a little bit, that it'll be okay. All right, so now let me put these in. Okay. And you can snug these up. And it's carbon, so you don't want to go too tight. If you hear a crack, you went too far. All right, so now that we have everything on the bottom secure, again, you wanna make sure that you are lining all these up with the existing marks. I just do them real loose by hand first, just to make sure that everything is exactly where I want it to be. And the big washer ones go on the, the inside and then the small washer ones go on the outside. It's also not a bad idea to do a test fit. Close your hood and see where it's at. But as long as you did the, uh, the washer trick, you're gonna be like 99% there. Okay. Just gonna put this here. 
Make sure that there's no random tools. All right, everything's gonna look good. All right, so just gonna throw these in here, and this is done. And then we just need to do the sides, the tops and sides. I know you guys are dying to know how my hood fitment is. Here we go. Boom! Look at that. So then in here, make sure that you plug in all of the connections and then take the two long eight mils. And I like to always do it by hand. I always make sure that everything is completely lined up first. And then put the other three 10 mils in. All right, so now everything over here is done. So I'm gonna pull the ramp out. And I'll gently lower this down. And then once we do the other side, we'll be able to take this whole car and put it on the ground. I mean, look how, look how good this is. And it's super solid. I just fell in love with my car all over again. When we got it back from designer wraps and he did the stealth wrap, it was like a whole new car. Now it's like a whole nother new car. The only thing I'm really lacking on right now, this thing needs tint because it looks silly. But um, other than that, I'm super excited with the progress of this car. All right, the final touch of this whole thing are these flicks. Now you can screw them on or you can tape them on. I'll be honest, not sure if I want them or not. So I'm gonna tape them on and basically just see how I feel about it. If I like it, then maybe I'll go back and I will um, screw them in. But I figure, you know what, let's just put them on first and then see, you know, I'll ride around with them for a little while, see how I like them. Um, we were just doing some testing and I feel like I'm gonna like them, which is kind of a bummer because I just put the bumper back on. <laughs> but we do have to take the bumper off again soon, so. All right, so we're gonna go off BMW's picture and try to get this as close to awesome as we can. All right, so as far as positioning goes, it's like here for the top one. That looks pretty good. I'm just gonna do it. Gotta commit. I'm just gonna hold it for 30 seconds or so. Actually stuck on a lot better than I thought I was going. <laughs> I had, uh, had my doubts. And then the second one, looks like it kind of goes like that. I want to kind of make them even though. What do you think about that, Z? I like that. Right there? Yeah. I gotta say, I really like them. So as you can see, with everything installed, this car looks like a whole new beast. I love the way that it looks. My favorite piece out of all this, like I said before, if I had to pick one piece, I would totally do the carbon air ducts. I think they are a total game changer in and of themselves. Adding the front lip adds a whole new dimension to the car. And then as far as the flicks are concerned, that was one part that when we had talked about doing this video, I told Zach, I was like, ah, I could take or leave them. I love the way they look. I, again, I just taped them on now. Um, we'll see if they fly off or not. Um, but 
I really like how they are. Um, so I probably will go back and I'll actually screw them in or use beta link and just make sure that they're not going anywhere. But yeah, overall, especially with the stealth wrap, this car looks so good right now. Um, and the cool thing is we were able to do it pretty quick. I know like with a lot of our other cars, it takes forever to build. Um, but I really liked being able to do everything in one video and hopefully it gives you guys a good, you know, basis on how to do all of this yourself and basically what the end result is like once you have that. Now, I said end result, but we have three more videos in this carbon series coming. So be sure to stay tuned because we have much more content coming your way. Once again, my name is Brian. That's Zach behind the camera. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. It helps us get found. Make sure to subscribe. Check us out at keysmotorsports.com. And for all of the links to the parts and tools we use in today's video, be sure to check out the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.